Hi there, I'm Black Bright, broadcasting out of the UK into your homes. Welcome to my channel. If it's the first time you're passing through, see whether or not you like what I talk about. And if you do, you put the thumbs up button. If you don't, you put the thumbs down button. I hope that's not the case. And then you can always share if you like. And if you want to hear more from me, you can subscribe. Um, for my existing subscribers, I just want to thank you for your suggestions, for your comments, for your interaction. Much appreciated. Today, I wanted to talk about Benin and their attempt to liberate themselves from France. But first, I just wanted to go back a little bit. Um, you know, any time a country, well, one of the black countries or islands, um, say Africa and the Caribbean, attempt to um, become independent from colonial masters, it's it meets resistance. Obviously, because... The colonial um, masters, they benefit from, you know, the people who they have colonialized. And so when we think about even Jamaica, when it went independent in 1962, the repercussions, it wasn't, a lot of it wasn't immediate. But, you know, the countries don't like it. And what did they do? America and USA, they started pulling away resources, hoping that Jamaica would collapse. Then in the UK, there was this targeting of the Caribbeans, you know, specifically Jamaicans as well, but a lot of the Caribbeans got targeted. I don't think they link the two. I don't think they associated it with independence because... Those people who are independent were in their own countries, but by becoming independent, you're taking away certain control from the people who you were dependent on. So they have to make it difficult, they can't make it easy, and as a result, we had, I mean, it happens years and years later, but we have the discrimination um, against the Windrush, which is all linked. We have the hostile policy, which is all linked. We have Operation Nexus, which is all linked. We have un unlawful deportations. We have prisons. Um, a lot of Caribbeans are in prisons. We have unlawful arrests. We have excessive force by the police. And a lot of it is on Caribbeans. And so, to me, it's their way of getting revenge for, you know, for pulling out. You pull out, so why should we do anything for you? And that is the way it's perceived. So when we're thinking about the African countries, in particular Benin, who wants to withdraw all the national reserves from the uh, French um, bank, can you imagine how that's going to be received? I hope it's not the case, but those, Africa, those Africans in France they're going to pay the price. You know, you know, I don't know how, but the same way that they do it to us in England and you have the deportations and you have the imprisonment and you have the bias, they'll get them back in some way or another. You can guarantee that. They won't get off scot-free. Um, but let me just say, just a little background. Um, I did it in another video about the cooperation and compliance agreement that, you know, certain African, I think it was about 14 um, Commonwealth countries signed with France. It was in 1957 and it was kind of a trade-off. We'll give you, the France was saying, we'll give you your independence. You give us 80% of your national reserves. And I think the African countries were so pleased to get their independence, they didn't even think about it. And now you're looking at, you know, nearly 50 years down the line, they're still beholden to France. And the country, a lot of the countries are in poverty and they're not in poverty through mismanagement. They're in poverty because 80% of their national reserves has to go into the African bank. So Benin is saying enough is enough. We want our money. We're not, we don't want to put it into the national reserves anymore. Worse, they want to create their own currency. What France was doing was giving them the, the franc, the say a F franc, and um, and they had control of that. They were the ones they had to um, 
the African colonies that were bound by this agreement had to ask France um, for the top up of the amount, then they'd pay interest on it and all sorts. So it's reached a point now where, like Zimbabwe, just a year ago, just no, 10 years ago, Mugabe was trying to get their own currency and it got quashed through hyperinflation and goodness knows what. Anyway, um, yesterday, today is the 12th, 13th of November. So yesterday they were lining up in Harare for the first um, Zimbabwe dollar. It's called Zim dollar since 2009. If only Mugabe could see that. Could you imagine? So they, they've done it. They've got their own currency. And um, what Benin is trying to do is create their own currency, ECOA. So um, they're going to meet up with a lot of resistance as well. But I hope it's, you know, sometimes you have to have a little resistance in order to get a step forward. If you go along with the status quo, nothing changes. So you need to kind of... Let people know that you're not stupid. I think a lot of people, they think black people are stupid, you know. Just because we're placid, and we are quite placid, unless you get our goat, unless you rub us up the wrong way, unless you start taking the pee, we're a placid race. And I think that is mistaken. For And we're also a trusting race to a large, large degree. And I think that is mistaken for being stupid. And because we are not so money oriented, I think that they, they think we're stupid. So what happens is, is when um, a country decides, OK, we're going to show you our intelligence and we're going to tell you what we want. That is going to meet with opposition. And that is what's happening now. And the irony is, is that, you know, um, I don't know if you know about the Berlin Convention. Well, the Berlin Convention, it separated all the African countries into little bits. And then so that each country had its own borders and it was hard to trade between each country. And I was listening to Dr. Arikana and she was saying that, you know, African countries, they can't just go from like, say, Nigeria to Ghana easily, or say from Ghana to, I think you can get to Kenya relatively easier, but there's a lot of countries, I would have thought, Africa, you're all in one place, you can just say, okay, I'm going to pop over to Ghana, jump on a plane and go to Ghana, but you can't. Apparently, each country has its own visa, they have to go to the United States, Washington, D.C., to get a visa for each country. So if somebody's in Ghana and they want to go to um, Nigeria, they need a visa. And then what they need to do is, if, I suppose they want to go to three places like Ghana, Nigeria, and say Gambia, just for example. They need three separate visas. So and each visa, they have to keep going back to the U.S., to get it. So, you know, you have to wait four weeks for one visa, send it back again, four weeks for another visa. And so people don't bother. People don't bother um, visiting different parts of Africa because they've made it so difficult. And apparently it's because of the Berlin Convention back in 1884. So a lot of it was to um, prevent trade and to keep control and to pre prevent economic development. And that's why I'm a bit concerned about Nigeria closing its doors to Benin, because that's why I don't know if how many of you saw that video, but I said, I wonder if it's a setup, because if um, the powers that be knew that Benin was starting to withdraw their um, national reserves and put it in their own bank, they're going to start making it hard for Benin, aren't they? So if they're going to make it hard for Benin, they would do that through Nigeria, closing their borders and not allowed, allowing them to trade. To me, that might be the start. We don't know. I mean, Nigeria might not, you know, connect the dots. I don't know, but that could be a possibility. Anyway, um, what was I going to say? Yeah, when we got our independence... Um, in 1962 from Britain, like I said, they um, 
this is Jamaican independence, of course. I mean, we had Trinidad, and I think there was quite a few that um, got their independence in the 60s, and all around, all around about the same time. But in 2003, before, before 2003, Jamaicans could come and go. We were part of the Commonwealth, we were British subjects, we didn't need a visa. Then, all of a sudden, in 2003, I don't know what the significance is. I'm sure if I could track it back somewhere, in 2003, something might have happened. But in 2003, England decides that Jamaicans now need a visa to get into the UK. Prior to that, they didn't need a visa. So when I'm talking about how they... Um, still manage to control and if you revolt against that or if you say i'm not going i'm going to get in independent and i think in 2013 was it 2000 no 2012 portia simpson wanted to um wanted jamaica to be completely independent and become a republic you know and all the newspapers were saying oh jamaica's ditching the queen and making it look really really bad so, you know, a lot, and then you find in 2016, then, 2016? Yeah, 2016 was when the hostile environment came out. And you know how many Jamaicans were targeted there, you know, with this illegal deportation and why they're so hostile to Jamaicans, because as far as they're concerned, who the hell do you think you are? Seeking independence. Who the hell do you think you are trying to be a republic? And that is their attitude. The colonializer's attitude is that who the hell do you think you are? You bunch of enners. You've got the nerve to say you want to be independent from us? How dare you? And the thing is, what is scary is that France has got all these military troops all around Africa waiting for a situation like this, what Benin is creating, so they can step up the ante. So they've got to be really, really careful because the repercussions of liberation are going to be very, very severe. But, you know, it's a price we have to pay. And like a lot of, you know, in the past, the, the price of, uh, you know, redeeming us from slavery, that came at a very high cost. So, um, yeah, I just wanted to mention that. I'm not going to go belabor the point. Um, Africa, I was going to say, Africa may suffer a similar demise or revenge in quotes in one way or another, especially for Africans in France. I've already said that, for daring to gain control over their own currency, resources and country. France is not going to want to lose control over the 14 colonies. Um, according to Dr. Arikana Shikombori Kao, France has forced many colonies to sign a pact for the continuation of colonization. Now, I don't know if that's the same as the cooperation and compliance agreement that they signed in 1957. I don't know if this is a different document or if there's two documents running in parallel. I'm not sure. Um, what else? Mali and Guinea refused to sign this um, that agreement, apparently, and the French went into those two countries. Apparently, they put co concrete in their water pipes or something and devastated the two economies. So, um, and they did that, like, as a threat for anybody else who's going to try and rebel against their colonial rule, then you're going to be in trouble. Basically, that's what they're saying. Um, so France takes fourteen billion pounds a year out of Africa. Fourteen billion. How can they take fourteen billion when every day we see on our TV these little images of children with flies coming out of their mouth, emaciated images, as though the whole of Africa is starving. The whole of Africa is poor, has poverty, disease, and goodness knows what. How the hell do they get 14 billion pounds out of Africa if it is so poor? So the, the sums don't add up, do they? 
Um, the media, yeah, I've already said that. Ben, Benin plans to withdraw their reserves from the French national banks. Frank has been able to colonize a number of Francophone African countries by enforcing a number of rules by those two agreements I told you about. If they are two agreements, I don't know if they're one of the same. Um, given independence on the, they were given, France gave um, the African colonies independence on the proviso that they deposit 80% of their nat national reserves into the French National Bank, Bank de France, and um, yeah, and then they put that all on the stock market. Apparently they made 300 billion, according to Dr. Arikana. 300 billion from Africa. So, no, it's just, you know, it's like Dragon's Den when you go in there, you've got this little business, and they say, okay, I want a percentage of your company. And, you know, what am I going to get for it? It's a bit like this, but bloody 80%. That's a bit, that is, that is ludicrous. That is greed. And they must think Afri those African colonies are bloody idiots. If they, they sign something that says, oh, we, you have to put 80% of your national reserves in a bank. That's what they must think. But I bet you was it, you know, I bet it was in the little writing. I bet it wasn't very clear. I bet it wasn't, you know, like when they say the small print. I bet it was in the small print. I bet if they'd said up front and made it clear that they had to give 80% of their national reserves. But maybe they felt that was the price of so-called freedom, not realising that they'd be bound even worse after signing it because they didn't really get freedom did they well they got it to an extent but not in the way they wanted it so um like i said france enforced its own country currency called cfa franc Benin's national reserves are an insurance that guarantees the stability of the cfa and therefore the control of inflation head of state benin president patrice talon has ordered that his country's former foreign currency reserve, colonially deposited in France Central Bank, be immediately withdrawn. So, we're hoping that with enough media coverage and enough sharing of this information, that his life will not be a threat, because previous... Um, presidents, African presidents that have tried to liberate in one way or another have been assassinated, so they say. So we'll have to um, pray that he's okay and that he knows, he's obviously aware anyway, he must know the risk he's taking. Uh, most people thought that colonialization of this type had been abolished until Dr. Arikana, I think that video that she did, I think it opened so many people's eyes. And I think that is why, you know, people are starting to rally around and, you know, make it clear, you know, all they want, all people want is to be treated fairly. That's all people want. Why is that so difficult? Why is it so difficult to, uh, not to exploit? I mean, everybody wants to make a profit. Everybody does. You know, you have a business, you make a profit, but why to that extent, 80% of your national reserves, leaving them with 20%? I mean, even if they did 50-50, it wouldn't even be so bad. But 80%. So, you know, it just needs to be fair. And, you know, with all of this, whatever's going on around the world, all everyone wants is to be treated fairly. People on DWP, they want to be treated fairly. The elderly with their pensions, they want to be treated fairly. And similar to Africa and the Caribbean countries, they just want to be treated fairly. Everybody just wants to be treated fairly. What is wrong with that? Why is it so difficult to treat the working class and the ethnic minorities fairly. Why is it so difficult? Why do, you know, why do those powers that be in the system resent treating people of a certain class and colour fairly? I don't get it. It's not taking nothing out of their pockets. But sometimes it's greed. Sometimes they want double or treble or quadruple. 
Anyway, um, apparently the French just want to reform the currency um, because now they realise that Benin wants to create their own currency. Apparently they want to talk about a reform of the currency. They don't want to abolish it, but they want to talk about a reform. But I don't know what's going to happen. Apparently for them to come out with um, a new currency is going to take over a year. It's going to take quite a lot. And there's a lot of legal hurdles to overcome. But Zimbabwe did it. Zimbabwe's got the Zim dollar. So it took them 10 years, but they finally got it. So it is possible. Um, Africa, um, apparently there is, a, uh, I don't know how you spell it, RO400 and um, Arrow 400. And it's supposed to be um, a plea or not a plea, but a message to Africans across the globe that 400 years of slavery, it's time to come home. Time to come home to Africa. And apparently Africa awaits. Um, they've got the return of Africa going on, you know, where, like I said, they've given free um free land in Gambia, providing, you know, you've got some kind of association with Gambia. Is it Gambia they did it? I think it was Gambia. Oh, I can't remember now. But there was offering free country. There was offering free land. I'm sure it was Gambia. Anyway, whichever country it was, you know, you have to kind of think about, you know, where is your home? Where do you feel your home is? That's what's more important. Some people can be in England and feel that England is their home. Some people can be in America and feel that America is their home. But when the shit hits the fan and these white people say, we don't want you here, get out, go back to where you come from. It doesn't feel very much like home at that point. So just sharing my, giving you my little two pence worth. And that's all for now. Bye bye.